Ich so. Right, ma'am. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, um, it is my pleasure to present um, um, a talk on motivation and engagement, uh, which is based on my recent research um, to all of you who have gathered here today. Um, My research question is that motivated. And if so, how can we enhance it? And is there a difference between the two? And then I'll be uh, sharing some uh, with my own research. So if motivation refers to energy and direction and the reasons for engaging in specific behaviors, then the engagement would be the energy in action, the connection between thought and actual behavior. And, and this particular research is based on a very strong, profound theoretical framework. I have highlighted only six theories here to the left need achievement, self-worth motivation, attribution and control, um, achievement goal theory, self-efficacy theory, and expectancy value theory. The reason for choosing these theories is mainly because these theories either refer to cognitions or associated behavior, thereby we are addressing motivation and engagement. For example, need achievement theory says that Failure avoidance or uh, trying to achieve or um, respond to a question only to pass a particular exam. That is, you are avoiding failure by just doing enough to pass. Anxiety related to stress, self efficacy related to confidence, valuing or looking at the value or the utility of what we are learning, and then mastery with the intention is be pleased about um, our own uh, capabilities and achievements. On the other side, the behaviors that are highlighted in this theory are self-handicapping or self-sabotaging. Whereas in attribution and control theories, many psychologists have talked about um, locus of control, not being sure of uh, what to control or how to approach the task. And again, mastery orientation and anxiety, as in before, self handicapping. And these psychologists have added two more dimensions to behaviors. They are study planning and persistence. Planning how to study, how to learn, and then persistence how to uh, keep on working on the regular problems. Then the next theory, achievement goals theory, they talk about self as mentioned up at the top with the achievement and so forth motivation, mastery orientation and failure avoidance, all of them have been already proposed by these two sets of theorists. And the one element that achievement theory has talked about is the study management. Attribution and control theorists talk about uh, study planning, 
we added one more dimension about study management, how do we manage our time, how to uh, choose the right place in order to concentrate on what we are studying, etc. And the last two theories talk about self-efficacy, valuing locus of control, which have been covered by all of these theories. And the highlight figure is another addition to the characteristics of motivation, that is disengagement, that is withdrawing from the whole process of learning, which may affect one's motivation and engagement. So based on these solid theories, uh, Martin in 2003 came up with a model. That model had two layers. One is the 11 factor model upon which the fourth factor model was built. In 11 factor model, he identified 11 factors here that are invested, starting from self-efficacy, value of school, mastery of the intention, and all of these. And when he further conducted some statistical procedures, he was able to come up with these four main factors. He called them as dimensions. He labeled them as adaptive cognitions, self-efficacy, value of school, mastery orientation. They are all cognitions, but they are adaptive. They are proactive for motivation engagement. And study planning, study management, and persistence uh, he labeled them as behaviors, adaptive behaviors, because they are going to contribute towards one's motivation and engagement. And he called adaptive cognitions and adaptive behaviors as adaptive motivation and engagement. And then he called maladaptive cognitions and maladaptive behaviors as maladaptive. On the matter of cognitions, he identified anxiety, anxiety about work, about exams, about assignments, failure of avoidance, just doing enough only to pass the exam. So that is not a good indication of motivation because the student is not pushing for all this Uncertain control, um, the moment the assignment is given to students, they are quite confused, they don't know where to start, how to start, how to go about it. self handicap self touching intentionally for the sake or intentionally doing something that will prevent them from seeing the um, exam. And disengagement, withdrawal from um, study. If we lay all those 11 factors and 4 factors on a wheel, he calls, Martin calls this a student motivation engagement wheel. This is how it looks. So you have four major dimensions, adaptive cognitions, adaptive behaviors, including more maladaptive cognitions and maladaptive behavioral dimensions. And these 11 factors that are there have been found here under adaptive cognitions are the thoughts about confidence, being pleased about one's work, and the utility value of what they are learning. They all come under adaptive cognitions, but it's the idea of all related behaviors, all related uh, cognitive dimensions which are maladaptive, and behavioral dimensions which are maladaptive are disengagement and self -management. So basically, when you are applying this model to the data that we collect from students, what happens is, depending upon how they respond to the items related to these, we will be able to get what is going on with each of these level factors. Is it high? Mastery orientation is high, but there is some amount of uncertain control. So in that case, we should be able to help those students to decide or to approach the task in an efficient way. What Martin did was he had only four items in, the, in his survey, which he calls as SME. It's, it's the student motivation engagement scale. He had four items for each of these factors. Actually, how this happens is he just has to give those 44 items because there are 11 factors, 44 items are given to students, they were asked to serve, they were 
respond to those questions. And then when he did that analysis, first he came up with 11 factors. And then he was so excited, he went about doing further analysis. And then he said, look, I've got the second order, and that is the fourth factor, that is adaptive cognitions, adaptive behaviors, maladaptive cognitions, and maladaptive behaviors. So I've just given you the natural summary of um, his uh, proposal. What I've done with uh, my research is that I used SM yes, that is uh, Martin's model, Martin's scale, on a set sample here in Canberra. He had done a lot of work in using this scale only in a cross section studies. Like, that data is collected from students at one point in time. And he said, look, I've got 11 factors, look, I've got four factors. But there is no research available to say that whether there is any consistency in a longitudinal study along these uh, 11 motivations, motivational factors or four motivational factors. So my uh, aim was to see whether this 11 factor model works on students who have consistently responded to this questionnaire for three years, that is in year 10, year 11, and year 12. If that is consistent, I wanted to make sure that um, the fourth factor model also works. I want to test whether it works. And apart from that, I also looked at the associations between motivation, that is motivation and cognitions, engagement, and three key time points individually that is cross sectional. So I had a youth sample, 537 students in year 10, 383 in year 11, and 299 in year 12. That is cross sectional. Then I went to longitudinal, I went with the same students for three years to see whether the motivation and engagement factors are stable. So at all three time points, I took out only those 299 students who had responded to the questionnaire at all times. And I also looked at changes, changes in their means of these factors and gender differences over time. So that is also longitudinal. So the cutting edge of this research is that I have applied Martin's model to see whether it works. Um, Longitude. So, very clear research questions. I had uh, uh, to look at associations between the factors of motivation and engagement, between the learning factors, how they are associated with each other, and then I wanted to look at the relationship between motivation and engagement, that is, only cognitions and behaviors. I pulled out only the cognitions separately and uh, behavior separately, and I saw what is the relationship between the two, whether there is a positive relationship or a negative relationship. And I also looked at the stability of uh, motivation and engagement across three years, whether there is any change in motivation of those 299 students um, in the beginning year 10, from year 10 to 11, or 11 to 12, or from year 10 to 12. And then gender difference, whether there is um, any uh, between boys and girls of motivation and engagement. I have used different statistical procedures. Um, the attrition analysis um, is by using the MANOVA. MANOVA is a um, multiple analysis of variance that we use and whenever we do longitudinal study, as you all know, we have to do attrition analysis because there might be some experiences because of the change in sample size. Um, related factor associations, I use structured uh, English modeling using the software. Um, and I first did exploratory factor analysis, that is EFA, and confirmatory factor analysis. Um, and then I developed a model using structured English modeling. Um, and then I also found uh, the relationship between the factors and the population conditions. Um, I used multiple regression for um, uh, identifying the stability of motivation and engagement uh, across three years um, and in order to find uh, the changes in uh, in 
level differences or male level differences and gender differences in motivation and engagement uh, by using mixed design and over. Mixed design and over is uh, the analysis of the variance of the time and So, coming to results, eleven factor model emerged just beautifully with all the parameters we and uh, with the uh, various researchers or uh, statisticians uh, and relations. Um, and uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, the fourth factor model did not emerge at all three to it. I don't know whether um, uh, that result was great at that point in time uh, or not so great, or if so, why? Um, adaptive cognitions, that if you see very good school mastery of implementation, they were highly adaptive for a bunch of students, 75% of them uh, showing. And um, these means are uh, based on the responses uh, uh, on a like, scale uh, with the rate of one percent one meaning strong meaning strong meaning. And so the total would have been 28, but um, uh, 21.76 out of 28 is really hard. Uh, um, whereas behaviors, adaptive behaviors, there is the drop here, 57 percent there, and you can see as the number showed here. And maladaptive cognition is anxiety, failure to avoid and uncertain control, um, 50% is fairly low compared to adaptive cognition. So the lower these two are, the better. So the, the amount of students that I had um, seemed to be more inclined towards adaptive motivation, although uh, adaptive behaviors and uh, the best news is this um, maladaptive behavior self-handicapping and disengagement amount to only 20% um, the less of the better um, so uh, the short story of this one is that um, I have researched on students who are um, mostly unmotivated um, although Excuse me, ma'am. Yes? Uh, can you speak a little louder, ma'am? It's just a little disturbance. Um, firstly, looking at the associations, um, you can see this is year 10, the first year. Um, quite high, the correlation coefficient is 0.80, that is very, very high. Um, spelling of school is also high, 0.85, with uh, mastery orientation. And planning becomes a big deal. So remember, these are all the behaviors that we are talking about, whereas the cognitions are high. So you may note that there is going to be a difference between um, motivational cognitions and behaviors. And at the lower end, uh, regarding maladaptive, um, they are not very low, but they are low compared to uh, 0 0.80 between self efficacy and uh, value of school. This is only 0.50. Then in 11, it is 0.74. That's a different evaluation. Um, previously, it was uh, 0.80 and all these. But when they come to year 11, slowly it decreases. The correlation coefficient is between, um, for the relationship between value of school and self efficacy has gone down. Same way. And, and further dip in their motivation when they are in year 12. And it's the increase of this. Now, the association between motivational cognitions and behavioral engagement. I looked at the means of uh, uh, cognitions and behaviors um, by using this design and over. I could come up with these findings that in year 10 and 11 and 12, adaptive cognitions are very high. Okay. Uh, very similar. But when it comes to adaptive behaviors, both 
uh, in your, uh, sorry, in all three years, uh, in years 10, 11, and 12, that's the 10. So, I'm not sure whether we have to worry a lot about this because um, the difference, the, the prevalence of difference between cognition and behavior um, is quite universal um, across all the walks of life. I can just give you a simple example of how all of us um, uh, try to do exercise in order to maintain good health or to reduce weight or uh, any particular reason. We want to do that very sincerely because our thoughts are so much inclined to it. But when it comes to the task of really getting up to the bed and getting on to the playground or the mobile or um, go for a walk, that moment is something that is happening to you. Uh, we, we can't put or we can't translate our thoughts into behaviors. It's the same with the um, cases of um, smoking or drugs or um, it could be related to any particular behavior that you want to bring it up. Your thoughts are really, really um, strong, okay? but the behaviors are not matching the thoughts. So these behaviors should have been somewhere here in an ideal condition. But as in any other area or walk of life, we find the same difference between cognition and behavior um, and difference. And um, same way, maladaptive cognitions and maladaptive behaviors, this is good news. However, it is a difference. Um, so, associations um, between cognitions and behaviors are very normal. And then I also looked at stability of motivation and engagement. I have 11 factors here. This is in year 10, this is in year 11, and this is in year 12. And by uh, applying multiple regression procedure, I have found that um, adaptive cognitions are pretty similar, around 0.5, although this is quite low. This is low here behaviors, but slightly picks up when they go to year 12, except persistence. And if you see anxiety, it is fairly low, 0.52, compared to 0.64 when it increases towards year 12. Failure avoidance decreases. Uncertain control decreases. self handicapping increases. So you can see a very pattern of stability in motivation. I also looked at changes and, um, and gender differences in motivation, changes in time, I mean, yeah, and gender differences in motivation and engagement. Then for school for boys was down very quickly. Um, likewise, um, Mastery orientation feel increased about once a little For boys, it comes down and you look for those like these are all very significant resources that I uh, recently resources. And then anxiety also decreases, although it is a peak when you are in the level. And various explanations for the people who are pleased because um, considering the educational system here in Australia, um, you can say because by the time they reach year 12, they know what they should be doing after year 12. There are so many choices, they have made up their mind, um, and so there is no point in worrying about studies. And then this engagement here increases for boys, whereas for girls, there is an increase, but it is less than the boys. And then self handicapping um, decreases for boys. So, diagnostic findings about motivation and engagement in the chosen sample tools. This is towards general learning at school. It is very clear that motivation and engagement are very complex and dynamic. change. But at the same time, stable with small changes, especially in adaptive conditions and behaviors. We have a lot of difference between um, maladaptive. 
So what does it suggest? It is a positive picture. This model is able to capture a positive picture of the patient. And uh, however, that, that doesn't mean that uh, we would have to work on it. Still, we need to uh, work to improve the population engagement um, in the five years. Um, strong, very strong associations between adaptive cognitions and adaptive behaviors at all time. This is very positive. This is an ideal situation in the student body. Um, it is very hard to get these kinds of results, I'm sure, um, in the part of the world, for example, um, unless you are going to be choosing an area where uh, the academic rigor is optimal. All motivational concerns should moderate the strong stability over time. Positive, but still there is room for improvement. Um, adaptive cognitions were consistently high at all times. Mean levels of adaptive behavior is moderately high. Or on maladaptive motivational practice concepts are consistently low, like this engagement that is very low at all times. This is another snapshot of the very, very positive motivational practice engagement students here. Adaptive cognitions appear to be more stable than other motivational practices in all this. That is also what we noticed because their uh, um, uh, motivation seems to have. Uh, being very stable in the sense that they're maintaining their levels of um, cognitions related to their confidence, related to valuing or mastering of the patient um, across the years. Maladaptive constraints, anxiety and self-help capital are to be more stable. It means um, we need to work on maintaining uh, lower levels of these two factors. As any research would have, um, I have two important uh, limitations restricted to sample um, from the Australian capital to the country and uh, motivational engagement to the centers or not targeted in one particular um, subject area. Um, the message from this research is that uh, having the realistic expectations is um, the most important. They need to be addressed before setting expectations. If we have very high expectations of the student who is struggling to understand what's going on, then we can't relate the person as unmotivated, not motivated. Just browsing through the newspaper this morning and um, uh, I found that as of yesterday, it was stable in the lower house of the area. That more than 4,400 students dropped out of engineering education in the last three years. 2,060 students from IIT and 2,352 from NIT. I think it is time to look at, as a member of the teaching faculty or as a student, large number of students who have dropped back. The HRD ministry also said that the reasons for dropout of cases may be attributed to shifting to other institutions, personal reasons, medical reasons, getting jobs to the community portions, inability to cope with the stress, etc. So all of these four reasons given here are think by applying this particular model of uh, um, diagnosing motivation and engagement of students, especially the two factors um, related to personal reasons. It could be anything related to what we had talked about, except that you see it could be about value of reading, value of education, or it could be related to the 
God is always engaged in sending happy. Oh, inability to cope with academic stress, nothing but what they look at as anxiety. So I'm sure um, this model can be applied to um, to engineering students in the very first year, maybe in the second semester, to see how far into their engagement so that they can um, stay through the rest of the years. How can we go about it? What can we do to enhance motivation in each particular students through diagnostic, experimental, or project based, or research oriented investigation? So it is more uh, relevant to the faculty members who say to take some research on their own respective faculties and universities to see what best they can do in order to uh, retain. Um, it could be through a research project or any of these different designs that I had given up about um, subject forms or influences. Supposing you find um, a dip in one particular unit or subject area of engineering, that particular group would be targeted to see what their um, motivation and engagement um, Targeting any particular year group, supposing you tell them, they are um, in their work, first year engineering degree. They are okay, but the problem is that they come to the second year, um, they want to put more constraints or not that particular So maybe you can talk in that particular year group or one particular topic in engineering that the students are not doing well, they're not going to do well or study hard. Uh, action research. You can do some action research related to one particular group of students who have been um, uh, less motivated, for example, through descriptive. You can just describe that particular group. You have a class of, say, 300 students in the first year. So, for the day, uh, amongst them, about um, 20 students are not inclined to study at all. Then that is when you are going to um, have those students have a structured interview with them and then talk about uh, how um, various factors that they have identified. Or quantitative or quantitative research. Um, we can also examine the effectiveness of one particular strategy to enhance motivation and engagement of engineering students. For example, if you find that out of these seven factors, their self efficacy is very low, so how are we going to address the problem? How are we going to enhance their, their um, self efficacy beliefs? Um, Faculty profile of student motivation engagement in specific subject course of engineering. You take the profile of one particular year group of engineering students and see how they fare in that particular area and compare or contrast with um, any other um, faculty interest. Focusing on motivation and engagement of specific students who are not working to their intention, who would definitely have a couple of students in your uh, very, you know that they are highly intelligent or extremely lazy. If only they could shut their laziness off and they focus on their study, you know that great things are going to come out of this potential. So you can target those students based on this diagnostic tool. Focusing on motivation engagement of specific students who are at risk, who are literally struggling right from the start, not able to explain why they are struggling, where the problem is, you can just call those students. It may, may not be more than a maximum of three students or three hundred you can identify, uh, if not through your lecture procedures, but also through through mentoring uh, or tutorials, whatever you call them. Uh, in smaller groups, you can identify where uh, students are struggling, and you can protect um, or estimate that all the students are going to be that is So by using this tool, you can identify that and also like uh, Faculty based or team based or individual approach to improving motivation engagement of students. You can 
take the whole thing as a package project. Or interested um, lecturers can um, work as a group and you know, do some research and do some interventions and do some papers. And or if you are particularly interested in your own powers and you want to focus on one particular um, area of research, Designing online engineering courses using different modules, learning management systems, and other platforms would also help um, if only we could identify uh, the, the less motivated students in order to make it some more interesting for them, in order to make them uh, work at um, their own pace. Um, such uh, designs of uh, online education would also help. So, Any questions, Shrida? Yes, uh, uh, they say, what about the population of other institutes? Sorry? One of the participants asked, what about the population of other institutes? Um, the population, you mean the student population? Yes. yes. Uh, it, it depends on what kind of a sample they want to work on. See, it can be done on a smaller scale and it can be um, translated into a bigger group. Uh, what is the size of the population they are looking at, you know? I hope they can uh, clarify and let us know. There seem to be no more questions, ma'am. They're saying thank you, but uh, there was some audio problem, so that's what okay. they're saying. Yeah, um, but if they have any questions, you could ask them to um, you know, send an email to me. Sure, ma'am. I have put it on the screen. Are you able to see it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Well, you can uh, have a copy of this in any way you can. Yes, ma'am. Or else I can send it through email. Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you very much for uh, patiently listening to my presentation, and I welcome your feedback and also questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you, you ma'am.